Hey everyone, this is Adam Kelly. This video is part of the Unity Coin Collecting Platformer series. If you haven't been following along, you can find a link to the playlist in the description. Otherwise, open up your project and we will jump back in. So the idea is that we're going to create a bunch of like boulders and other things. You could even try and create moving objects and things. You've got an idea of how you can rotate things and how you can move things over time. So feel free to experiment. But what I just want to show is sort of this technique that is very common in game design, where you take an object that exists once, you duplicate it a bunch of times. So I'll duplicate this rock, and then maybe I'll move it down, and I'll rotate it. And then I maybe want to put this coin sort of up on top of it. Let's make sure I got this right. Actually, it might be easier if I view it from the top and hit F. Um, then I can just sort of an isometric view. Then I can more easily see. And I'll switch it back. And then, so now this coin is kind of floating on top of here. And then if I click play, you would never know necessarily that these are two of the exact same object because they're rotated differently, but it just makes it that much easier to add interesting stuff to your scene without having to individual, individually, mod, individually model each rock that's going to go into this scene. So we're going to use this same approach, but let's add some more different meshes here. So we've got Boulder 1 in here. Let's add Boulder 2, Boulder 3, Boulder 4, and Boulder 5. And then let's go into our materials and just apply the rock material to each one. And then we also need to add mesh colliders. So we'll add a mesh collider here. We'll do convex for each one. So same deal, mesh collider, convex, mesh collider, convex, and finally, we'll add a component, mesh collider, convex. And now every time you use these, you will be able to just use them, you'll just be able to duplicate them. So uh, let's say we keep um, this one over here, we'll just sort of drop it down in the sand a little, um, and then maybe we want to create this one over here and sort of move it over here and maybe we'll move it down and we'll move this guy over here. And we can then rotate this like this and like this. And then maybe we would want to take this coin and duplicate it and move it so that it's like over here. So I'll, I'm now going to go into the top view again and hit uh, the isometric view and then figure out where that coin went. Okay, so I can scroll out. And then I should be able to place this like up here. Maybe I'll switch like that. And then now it's inside the rock, which is not what I want. But if I put it like here, do make sure that you are selecting the whole coin and not just the mesh, because if you move just the mesh, then you're going to end up walking through some um, <laughs> through the mesh and it's not going to do anything until you find where the actual trigger is. So now we've got three coins in our level. We got one down here and then we have to jump up and get this one. Then we have to walk up on here to get to this one. Okay, so we're starting to see sort of how this can take some shape. And so that's kind of neat. I like to see things come together like that. And then I just want to show you how we can keep things a little more contained, because obviously right now it's possible to leave the level, to walk all the way around and just completely get around this arch and make our door completely pointless. So let's grab this boulder right here. And I'm going to do a control D to duplicate it. And I'm not sure why this didn't um, stay inside of 
Oh, I never put it in rocks in the first place. Well, that's why. So maybe I want to drag all of these under rocks just to keep things organized. But I can move this over here. I can then scale it up, make it really big. And then I might want to, I'll, I'll position it roughly first. Okay, and then maybe like that, and maybe even rotate it a little bit to make things interesting. And then I can do this again. I can do a control D and then I can move it again. So maybe I want to rotate this one sort of like this and I can switch back into local or the global move mode. And I just want to kind of work around and one by one, I'm going to end up making sort of a wall. And why don't we use this one now? I'll duplicate it. I'll scale it up. Let's make it really big. And then I'll rotate it. And then we can move this up here. And maybe I'll move it back a bit. And so you can keep doing this. You can keep rotating things around. And now, rather than having this area that we can easily get out of, we have this wall that we're able to walk up to, but it doesn't feel like we have complete free reign around here. And you might be able to do things like sneak your way out of here, if, and that would just require some play testing to figure out you know, how to prevent that from happening. Um, I never gave the arch any, any mesh collider, so I suppose we should probably do that. Um, the other thing I'll mention that you can do as you're creating these walls, let's add a mesh collider to this. And I will mention, do not make this one convex. Reason being, if you do that, then now you're not going to be able to walk through this arch at all because it's got the hole in the center. So make sure to keep that uh, convex turned off for the arch. Um, what you could always do if you want to avoid the player being able to go too far, like ultimately you don't want the player to be able to fall off the edge of the map because then there's no way for them to get back. So I don't know if you remember, maybe you still play games like this, but I used to always try and get out of the level. That was like one of my favorite things to do when I was playing Halo, for example. And then my friends and I would always get frustrated when we hit an invisible wall. Well, those were there for a purpose. The purpose is so that you don't fall through and just fall forever, because right now that is how this is designed. If I, if I decide I'm just gonna run off this way, then the player will fall forever, which is not a very fun experience. So even if you get out, like, mm, what fun is it to fall forever? So what we can do, if you want to add some walls here, um, you know, we might want to create a new, uh, a new thing for this, uh, create empty walls. And what we can do is add in some primitive shapes that will prevent that from happening. So we will create a 3d object and we can use like a plane or a quad. I'm going to use a quad in this case. And so you can only see it from one side. Um, I'm really high up in the air, it seems. I'm not sure. Oh, because this got set to here. Let's set this to zero, zero, zero. And then our quad should now be on the ground. Okay, so that's good. And then we can, we can um, scale this up to be really big. Oh, it still wants to look at it from close up. Um, and then we can move this to a position where we want it to be. So let's say we, we don't want the player to be able to move beyond this wall here. So we rotate it like that. You can move it up. Probably want to make sure that it doesn't allow any gaps. And then all you have to do is hide the mesh renderer on this. And it has a mesh collider already so that if I were to walk up to it, 
it shouldn't let me go through. All right, so that's that's another way to make sure that you've made a well safe self-contained level so that the player can't go outside of it. So now at this point, I encourage you to use this method to create an interesting environment and create enough coins that things get interesting so that it's a challenging game. And then make sure that you update your coin collect task to whatever number of coins you want to collect. So right now I have three, so I want to make sure that all three are collected before that door will open. And just have fun with this. Try and create something interesting, something unique, something that feels like a game you would want to play. Maybe make some hidden coins. Um, if you're really ambitious, you could try and make some additional moving objects, add some other tasks, things like that. That's completely up to you at this point. And then uh, I'll go ahead and finish out my level, and then we'll come back and see what ours look like. I'm ready to share what I have put together here. So uh, there's a lot of plants you can see over here on the left. Um, I have a ton of boulders and I have a lot of coins as well. So in my interactables, it's a little bit, a little bit messy. I could probably organize this a bit better, but, um, you can see I have coin one, two, three, and so on up to 16. So I, I have 17 coins. So I updated my coin collect task and then I'll just do like a quick fly through right here. So from the cactus's starting point, you can see that there's a bunch of coins in different places. Um, and then the door, and then I'm going to fly right through the door. And then here's our little oasis here. I've added a lot of plants. I've put some extra rocks. I ended up not um, doing anything to prevent the player from going out here. Um, it just, for this example, it didn't seem like it was worth the extra effort. but um, you're, of course, encouraged to do that if you'd like to do that. So if I play the game, let me maximize this. Oh, I also want to mention, I completely missed this. Uh, I had this lighting thing turned off for pretty much the whole time that I was working on this project. Um, if you have something, if you're wondering why mine was so much darker than yours, or if yours was also dark, um, when it's in preview mode, uh, you can have the lighting turned off, and sometimes that's helpful, but in this case, it wasn't necessary. Um, and then you can also do this maximize on play button. If that's turned on, when you click play, it should maximize and take up the whole screen. All right, cool. So I really like the way this looks now, um, with the coin spinning and like, there's, it just seems like a very rich interactive level. So. I'm going to try and pick up all these coins um, and you get to watch for a little bit while I do that. So as I was doing this, I was sort of thinking about whether I should have approached this slightly differently um, in how I place the plants, because um, there's a, there's a, if you can believe it, there's a more efficient way to uh, place tons of plants on a landscape. Because it's kind of hard to do. If you were trying to do it, you might have found that sometimes your plants were floating. Oh no! Um, sometimes your plants were floating, and you had to move them down. Um, and there's there are landscape tools that are built into Unity, and I think those are super useful to know. But for a beginner course like this, I just thought it made more sense to stick with the simple way to do things. Sometimes, oh shoot, can I get that? Oh, I can fly right up this thing. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so so I think that the the way that we've done it here, where you just place your plants, works just fine. But I think you can also see how if you had to do a lot more than this, it would get pretty tedious. The landscape tools provide ways to build up your terrain as well as uh, like paint plants um, onto different parts of your level. So you can essentially just have a paintbrush tool that says, okay, uh, place down flowers in this, with this tool. 
and then you don't need to worry about placing them. It'll sort of just randomly scatter them for you, which can really speed things up and um, looks pretty good when you do it that way. And just in general is going to be a lot more efficient. Why can't I get up here? There we go. Sometimes it just takes some stubbornness. Okay, this one's this one's tricky right here. Um, also, I want to point out that the controls are a little clunky because we're using a keyboard. Um, I know that it's certainly possible to make smoother controls with a keyboard because we've all played computer games and you know they're not quite as clunky as this. But they have more advanced player controllers, character controllers than this one, and I think that that's what makes them easier to play with. So there's certainly some room for improvement with this player controller, but um, for something simple like this, I think uh, it's it's pretty good for learning. And now we've made it into our oasis here, and we can just take a quick swim in here, I guess. Just hang out in, by the pool and enjoy the scenery. So I hope you enjoyed following along with this course. It was fun to make. Um, there's so much more to learn with Unity, and I, I know that I intend to make more tutorials and courses, of course, and I hope that you've been inspired to uh, explore and learn more about it, but also feel like it really doesn't take that much knowledge to make something that's pretty cool like this. So good luck with your creations, and thanks for joining with this course. Hey, we really hope you're enjoying the course so far. If you are, make sure to check out the rest of our courses on ImmersiveLimit.com. There's other Unity and Blender related game development stuff that you'll probably be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.